Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS. Today in this session, we are going to see current affairs of 7th November 2023. So without wasting any time, so let us see the important articles that appear in our today's Hindu newspaper. And we are going to see detailed analysis of those topics from all the dimensions. So if you watch this video completely, what you are going to get? So you are going to get perspectives in which you can think about uh, an article. And if there is any article in news, so in how many subjects point of view you can think about that. So that thinking process you will be getting. And that thinking process is important for writing mains answers and even for your essay. So from all these points, okay, so this analysis is very, very important that we are providing in this Rathor Science Academy. So if you are watching this Rathor Science Academy news analysis, so watch daily so that you will be getting the new perspectives and we are going to cover each and every article in a comprehensive manner right so this is the front page of the hindu edition okay that is delhi edition so the first article is about after shock rocks nepal delhi so this article which is talking about earthquake so this topic is talking about earthquake so if you have gone through your syllabus of GS1 in geography, you have this chapter called as earthquake. So in earthquake, you have to know about what exactly the meaning of earthquake. It is nothing but shaking of earth. And during the shaking of earth, energy is released. That energy is released in the form of waves. So in waves, we have two types of waves. So first one is body waves and second one is surface waves and this body waves we have P waves and S wave that is primary wave and secondary wave. In this surface wave we have love wave and Rayleigh wave. So these two types of waves are very important and here many people many students they think that body waves are dangerous but the surface waves are very much dangerous. And these surface waves are responsible for destruction of structures which are present on the earth's surface. For example, if there is any earthquake happen, so buildings they will come down, trees come down. This is because of the surface waves, not because of this body waves. And here you have to know differences between this P wave and S wave. So this is very important from your prelims point of view. And you have to know the concept of this shadow region also. So this earthquake, we can also relate this with structure of our earth topic as well. So because of the studying of this earthquake waves only, we came to know that about the details of core. So in core, we have outer core and inner core, right? So in structure of earth, we have crust mantle and core right so in this core we have inner core and outer core so outer core is liquid in nature and inner core is solid in nature so this concept that we came to know because of studying of this earthquake waves that too because of this shadow region of p wave and s wave Okay, and we can also connect this topic with disaster management point of view as well. So you have to see like in which areas, so in which areas in our country they are earthquake prone and which are vulnerable to the earthquake. So which states are vulnerable to the earthquake and you have to draw a map of earthquake vulnerability in India. And even you can connect this topic with disaster preparedness as well. So how India is facing this disaster? So what is the preparedness by our government of India to tackle with this disaster? Right? So in all these dimensions you have to think. And one more important area we can connect here is international relations. So from international relations point of view also this topic is very important. Like here Nepal is involved. So here you have to understand, so whether these two countries, they are coming together in the collaboration regarding this addressing of this earthquakes or not. And even you can know about why this Nepal is very much vulnerable. 
like where it is located so vulnerability of nepal to this earthquakes so now and then frequently nepal is is uh, facing this disaster called as earthquake so why what are the reasons so all these dimensions that you can think about this single article so i hope you understood like how you have to read an article just simply reading the lines here which is present here it is not at all helpful for upsc so in this way you have to prepare is that clear so this is about the first article and here you can see this infographic which talks about election polls so there is no lot of bothering about how many seats and which party everything it is not at all important but in this infographic i found one important area that is here naxal affected belts so in chatisgarh there are about 20 constituencies they are going to have elections right so in this 20 constituencies there are about 20 seats they are present in this naxal affected areas so which are those naxal affected areas so here we have basta nantewada kanker kabirda and rajan dagon so these are the naxal naxal affected area so here you have to focus on what is this red corridor so red corridor is the area which is affected by naxalism and you have to see what are the causes for this naxalism and what are the steps taken by the government to decrease this naxalism and recently we saw one report like there is decreased naxal attacks right so because of this efficient control by the government of india so that led to decreasing of this naxal f naxal attacks in india so here you have to see what are the steps are what are the measures taken by the government so all these things are very important from this article and next topic it is governors delaying crucial bills a matter of concern says supreme court so supreme court says that especially states which are non bjp ruling states that means so here we have central government at the national level at national level we have central government and at the state level we have state government right so in the central at present bjp government is in power so this is the ruling party so we have many states so in some states bjp is in power in some states congress in some states in other political parties so especially the states which are non bjp ruling states so they are facing this problem because here governor he is the agent of center government is agent of center and central government wants to control states with this position called as governor so now governor is delaying the crucial bills right so this is the thing which seen in tamil nadu and as well as in kerala region so we discussed about this topic and again we are going to see this because now supreme court which expressed its displeasure why the governor is doing like this okay so this is a thing and here you have to see the constitution provisions and everything regarding this passage of bills and procedure for passage of bills in state legislative assembly is very important from this article point of view and here you have to see the power of governor in passage of bills okay what is his power like whether he will be giving a sign okay whether will he will be giving the assent or whether he will be Uh, keeping that on with hold or everything so that thing that you have to remember and in this first page that's it so in this uh, city page you can see anti dust measures in adequate more needs to be done for cleaner air says lieutenant governor so this article which is talking about air pollution in delhi and in today's class we discuss lot of articles regarding air pollution right so this article says that whenever we are taking some anti dust measures it is not at all helpful so we have to take some more additional steps to control air pollution in delhi region so this article is important from environment and ecology which comes under gs paper 3 clear and now let us move on to another page and you can move on to the states page and most of the articles are political articles so they will not help you at all so don't waste much time on today's newspaper so only articles which i am pointing out so go to that articles only 
and here you can see Bangalore to get exclusive rapid response team to capture leopards. So here you can see the image. So it is an image which which captured by CC camera. So the leopard on the first floor of an apartment. So what happened now there is increased incidence of animal sorry human animal conflict. Human animal conflict is happening. So here you have to see what are the reasons for this human animal conflict. So what are the reasons the first one is habitat destruction. So because of this habitat destruction, so these animals are coming out in search of prey, in search of food and water, right? So here you have to analyze what are the reasons for this increased human-animal conflict and you have to see what or the measures can be taken. That's it. And next topic is farmer killed by tiger in Bandipur reserve. So what happened? Yes, this is also one case of animal human conflict that is human animal conflict so your tiger it came out of its habitat and it attacked a farmer and killed the farmer so it is also called as man eater tiger so it is also called as man eater tiger so this article is also very important so here also we can relate this topic with the same thing that is what are the reasons for this increased human animal conflict and what can be the measures that can be taken by government and even how how some preparatory steps can be taken by the local community who are living nearby this tiger reserves so that point of view also you have to think and here you can get a case study from your ethics point of view so you can get a situation or scenario like if you are a district magistrate of that so and so area so what are the steps that you are going to take to control this human animal conflict so here my question is so please tell me what is your course of action as a district magistrate to that so and so district if you came across this type of incident okay think about this and please let me know your course of action in the comment box don't forget about this and here even we can connect this article with environment and ecology so where you can focus on some facts regarding this Bandipur Tiger Reserve. So where it is located, in which state, so which are the rivers flowing through this Tiger Reserves. So all these things are very much important. And next topic is 50 acres of farmland wiped out in land slips in Iduki. So actually, especially in this Western Ghats in Kerala, they are facing one issue called as land slides or land slip. So whenever there is rainfall is happening, so the soil which is present in this western ghats that will get saturated with this water that it is chasing from the rainfall and because of that, that, wat that water and soil is mixing and it is forming as a slurry and that is very slippery and it is coming down as landslip. So these are the common events that is seen in this Kerala region and one important reason for this landslip here is deforestation and exclusive mining activities so my question is what are the reasons or what are the causes for land slips in this Kerala region so please let me know the answer in the comment box don't forget about this so this article is also important from your disaster management point of view so in this disaster management you have to see like what are the steps what are the steps or how can we reduce this incidence of land slips in this kerala because agriculture is very important to ensure food security right so it is destroying this agriculture lands so agriculture is very very important so that we can ensure food security if at all these agriculture lands are destroyed then how can we ensure this food security so we can't ensure right so because of this we have to take some urgent steps so let me know what are the steps that can be taken by government to address this problem of land slips in kerala region so let me know how many of you are from kerala in the comment box so that you will be much connected with this article and you will be telling me the current scenario so what exactly the practical solutions that can be taken right so please let me know how many of you are from kerala
So, how many of you are Keralites? Okay. Yeah. And let us move on. And next topic here is five men from Tamil Nadu held with red sanders worth four crore rupees. So, actually, this red sanders they are grown in APA. Okay. That is in the forest of Andhra Pradesh. So, they are very much rich in uranium actually. So, that soil which is very much helpful for the growth of red sanders. So, red sanders are seen only in this AP region. But, so this is the most smuggled gold. It is one of the most smuggled gold in India, red sanders. Even there is one famous movie of Allu Arjun which talks about this red sanders. Okay. So, how they are smuggling this red sanders? So, how many techniques they are using for the smuggling of this uh, red sanders? And it is very, very costly. In that movie, I watched that movie. In that uh, movie, they said that they use this red sanders for the making of some musical instruments in other countries. Okay, so that is an uh, important thing that I know. But as of now, there is no nothing uh, details regarding this red sanders exactly where they are using this red sanders. Okay, so please let me know where they are using this red sanders. If you know some extra details uh, regarding this use of this red sanders in the comment box, don't forget about this. So here you have to see what are the acts which are present in our country. So which talks about this anti-smuggling. Okay, so that's thing that you have to remember. And even you have to focus on some facts regarding this red sanders as well. So, what is the production status, so where they are used and which area they are, they can be grown and what is the age of that so and so plant that can be used for the purpose, everything that you have to remember. Okay, so this is about this topic and in the editorial page, so most of the articles that we already discussed. Okay, so this article is talking about net neutrality, just you have to know what is this principle of net neutrality, that's it. So, here there is one paragraph which talks about this net neutrality. So, net neutrality, it is a principle that internet access providers must treat all traffic originating from and terminate into the internet in the same way. Okay, so it need to, tra need to treat all the traffic equally. So, this is the meaning of this net neutrality. So, that's it. And next topic is, it is about India is stale topic, okay, regarding the resolution which passed in the United Nations Security Council. So, this topic already we discussed in our earlier class. And if you move on in this opinion page, there is one article you have to see, that is the stressful life of students in quota. So, this article says that, so one study, okay, one Neeti study which done, it shows that majority of students, they live alone sleep less in order to study more and they feel homesick. So when I used to uh, live in hostel also, I used to have this homesick and every Saturday and Sunday I used to come to my uh, home, okay, and I used to bunk every Saturday classes in my college, okay. So let me know your feelings. So, so if you are staying in hostel, so how you will feel, whether you are feeling the stress, whether you are feeling, some people, some students especially, so when they are coming outside of their home, so they feel like relaxed. So which kind of student that you are? So please let me know in the comment box. So let us try to make this session more interactive. Is that clear? And in the text and context, there is article you have to know about this Poland government. So especially you have to know the map of this Poland. So that thing that we are going to see. And if you move on, here in this page, you can see India Bhutan to discuss new routes of regional connectivity. So here you have to focus on India Bhutan relations and you have to focus on different areas of cooperation between India and Bhutan. So this article is at most important. And here you have to see even map. So this article is important from your international relations point of view which comes under your GS paper too. So this article is also at most important. And if you move on, you can see how panel adopts reports on new criminal law bills. So already we know that we are going to have these three criminal laws. Okay, so that are going to replace IPC, CRPC and IEC that is Indian Evidence Act. 
so all those things that we have to know and already we discussed this topic number of times and you have to do revision so that important laws or like bharatiya nyay sanhita bharatiya nagarik suraksha sanhita bharatiya saksha adhiniyam okay so these are the three important bills that are going to replace ipc crpc and indian evidence act okay and if you move on here you can see collegium recommends chief justices of three high courts for appointments to supreme court so here you have to focus on this collegium system so this what is this collegium system so how it appointment process going on so what's about transfer process so there is a chance of getting question regarding this collegium system and especially among appointment of this chief justice and judges of supreme court and as well as high court from your prelims point of view and you can simply leave this assembly polls page so there is no need of going through this assembly polls page and in this news page you can see odd even vehicle rotation scheme to return in delhi so this article which is talking about odd even scheme so this uh, scheme which is used to curb this pollution so on this in this scheme here on the road so what they are going to do is for example if i am having a private vehicle like my own car or my own vehicle like bike etc so on road okay in delhi to control this vehicular pollution or vehicular emissions so one day they will be allowing the odd number vehicles okay and another day they will be allowing the even number vehicles so the tragedy here is if i am having if i am owning like two private vehicles two vehicles like one is car and one is bike so if one num one uh, vehicle number is odd and another vehicle number is even means i can use them both yes or no so this is a tragedy of uh, this delhi region and delhi air pollution and here you have to know like what are the measures that are taken by the government to control this air pollution delhi and next topic is hira lal samaria is chief information officer so here this topic is very important you have to go through this cic chief information officer a chief information commissioner so actually here uh, in polity also in lakshmi kant you have this chapter like chief information commissioner and recently this chief information commissioner is highly in use so you have to see some facts regarding this appointment process and eligibility criteria and tenure etc so that thing is very very important and this topic is important from your polity point of view which comes under gs paper 2 so that's it next one is free grains pose medium term physical risk so actually we have this scheme called as pradhan mantri garib kalyan yojana so under this pradhan mantri garib kalyan yojana so government said that we are going to give free food grains till december 2023 right so this article says that this free food grains that is going to pose medium physical risk that means it go it is going to increase the debt of the government so this is the thing which mainly said okay so these are the very important articles that appeared in our today's hindu newspaper so these are the perspectives in which you have to think and one more thing here is if you want to get the notes of this class to join the telegram channel the link is given in the description box don't forget about that and now let us see the notes part so the first article it is about governors delaying of passage of bills so context says that our honorable supreme court which is the apex court so supreme court expressed acute displeasure at governors upholding back key bills especially in non bjp ruled states like punjab tamil nadu Kerala and Telangana until the state's government approached the top court for judicial intervention. So actually, Supreme Court said that it is very much displeasure that these governors they are holding the bills. So they are not passing the bills, especially in non-BJP running states. Okay, so this is the cause of concern. So here, if you are focusing on this office of governor, there are some constitutional provisions. which talks about this con this office of governor and those articles that you have to remember 
So first one is Article 153. Article 153 which talks that yes the constitution provides the provision that there shall be the governor for each state. So this Article 153 which is, take, which is saying that just about yes there is a need of governor of the state. And the article which also provides that it is not necessary for every state to have a different governor and thus a person can be appointed as governor for more than one state. So yes, this article 153 says that yes, for every state we need governor. So it is not necessary that for every state we have a single governor or separate governor. But even for more than one state also we can have a common governor. So this is about this article 153 of our Indian constitution. And article 154 says that governor position in the state is a identical to the position of the president of India. Okay. So that means it is saying that yes we have governor in the state. As usual in state in center we have the president. So like the president here for the state also we will be having the nominal head that is the governor. Okay, so governor is the executive head of the state, which is a thing which said in this article 154. So if you are writing any introduction regarding the governor, yes, you have to start with this constitutional provisions like article 153 and like article 154. And you can say that governor will be acting as executive head of the state that is said under this article 154 of our Indian constitution. And next one is, if you are talking about the powers of governor in the passage of bill in state legislature. So, if you are talking about this process of passage of bill, so in bicameral legislature, that means the states are having two houses. So, we have state legislative assembly and we have legislative council. So, whenever the bill which is introduced in the first house, so it will go for DDV, that is debate discussion and voting. So after this entire process of debate, discussion and voting, so if this bill is passed in the first house and this bill is placed in the second house. So in the second house also the same process will go on like debate, discussion and voting. And if this bill is passed in the second house also, then that bill which is placed before our governor, governor is nothing but nominal head or executive head of the state under article 154 of our Indian constitution and he have some powers here so he will be using some powers okay so we are talking about this powers of governor so if the bill which is passed in the houses and if that bill is placed before governor so what are the options he is having okay so first one here is he can directly give the assent so giving assent means he can sign on the bill so whenever he is giving assent that bill will become an act and the second choice he is having is he can send that bill for reconsideration that means he can send the bill back to the house where it is passed okay so whenever Again, that house is passing that bill with or without recommendations or without with uh, without or with the changes, then that bill had to be signed by the governor. So, governor will be having no choice in this second case. And next one here is he can withhold the assent means. So, government will not give any assent. Okay, he can withhold the bill. And this one is the pending bill in the legislature. So if any bill which is pending in the house, then governor can send a message to such house for reminding them about the bill. And one more important power of governor here is he can reserve the bill. He can reserve the bill for assent of president. For example, if there is any bill which introduced in the house which is going to change the federal character of our country, then that bill can be reserved for the assent of the president. So the issue here is governor is withholding the bills, he is not giving the assent. So this is the issue that is seen in the number of states like Kerala and as well as Tamil Nadu. So this is about this topic in detail.
and now let us see next topic it is about earthquake in nepal so this article is important from your geography point of view from your disaster management point of view and even from your environment and ecology point of view so this topic is interconnected topic so we can't treat isolatedly from geography or from disaster management so we have to read in combination of both so if you see context it says that Three days after a violent earthquake that stuck in Jajarkot region of Nepal, so it is killing around one fifty people. So one fifty people they lost their life in this earthquake. So if you are talking about the frequency of earthquake in Nepal, so Nepal which is having earthquakes most frequently, why? Because it is located in Himalayan region. So it is located in this Himalayan region. So Himalayas are young folded mountains. They are young folded mountains, and these Himalayas they are not stable. So even now also there is increasing of height of this Himalayas day by day. See that means they are not stable and they are most active. So because of this active. Okay, active Himalayas because of this convergent plate boundaries. Okay, so this region is very much vulnerable to this earthquakes. Okay, so what happened? Nepal it is the eleventh most earthquake prone country in the world, and Nepal it is situated along the Himalayas where there is a lot of seismic activity is present. So because of this, it is most vulnerable to earthquakes. And if you are talking about Nepal seismic vulnerability, so what are the reasons for this earthquake in Nepal? So there are four reasons. So you have to make a note of those four reasons. So first one is the location of Nepal. So geographically, if you open your atlas, it is present in this Himalayan regions. So how these Himalayas are formed? Here we have Eurasian plate, and this is Indo-Australian plate. So this Indo-Australian plate, which moved towards northward, and finally, so it hit this Eurasian plate. So in between, we used to have this part is our Tethi Sea. So whatever the sediments which are present in this Tethi Sea, that had been uplifted, and that led to the formation of first Trans Himalayas, Greater Himalayas, Lesser Himalayas, and Sivalik region, right? So here we have. Four rows of Himalayas. So they are nothing but the sediments in this Tethi Sea and are seismically very much active. So first one is the location of this Nepal. So which is present on this convergent boundary. So Nepal is located on this convergent boundary where Indian and Eurasian tectonic plates they collide. So, because of this collision of this Indo-Australian and as well as this Euro Euro Asian plate, okay. So here, because of this Asian plate and because of this Indo-Australian plate, they collide towards each other. So here we have Tethi Sea, and in that Tethi Sea we have sediments. So because of this movement of these two plates, so whenever these two plates are moving towards each other, so those type of movement is called as convergent plate boundary. So, because of this convergent plate boundary, what happened? The sediments in this Tethi Sea they had been uplifted and they formed this Himalayas, right? So, this is the mechanism, and because of this convergent plate boundary, that led to this most active region, and that is the one important cause for this frequent earthquakes in Nepal. And next one is subduction zone. So, what is a subduction zone? You have to know this. So, for example, this is the first plate, and this is the second plate. So, let us consider this first plate is heavier. So, whenever these two plates are moving towards each other, that is convergent plates. So, the heavier plate will be moving down. So, this is called as subduction. Okay. So, this is called as subduction. So, this plate is called as subduction plate. Right. So, in this case of this convergent boundary, okay, between this Indo-Australian and Euro-Asian plate, 
so indo austerian plate is heavier and this led to this subduction okay so indo austerian plate is sliding underneath of eurasian plate so because of this subduction process still happening that led to the increasing of stress and strain on the crust okay that led to this nepal earthquake so this is the second reason okay so if you know this concepts of three theories like plate tectonics sea floor spreading and continental plate theory then you can understand this concept much detail okay so here you have to apply your static knowledge to understand the present dynamics which are happening now and next one is poor building construction practices so many buildings in nepal they are made up of unreinforced masonry so they are not very strong to resilient to this earthquakes and because of this they easily collapse in the earthquakes and that causes lot of casualties and this one is remote and mountainous terrain so nepal is in remote and mountainous area so which is making it very much difficult to provide relief and as well as assistance as well so these are the four important reasons for this earthquake in nepal and if you are talking about the preparedness in india so how india prepared to address this issue of earthquakes so first one here is we have to focus on monitoring some centers like seismological centers so that we will be having monitoring and dissemination of information about the people in the vulnerable areas and we can also have this vulnerability maps of the country okay we can also have this vulnerability maps of the country and we can also focus on community preparedness community preparedness like drop cover hold techniques in the case of earthquakes and we need to have efficient planning so we need to have this efficient planning for example we have bureau of indian standards so which has published building codes and guidelines for safe construction of buildings against earthquake and this one is we have to focus on even public education so we have to focus on educating the public on causes and characteristics of the earthquake and preparedness okay and even we can come up with some sensitization programs okay etc and we have to focus on engineered structure like so whenever we are focusing on the development projects first of all we have to do detail analysis of soil strength whether it is uh, strong or not whether we are going for this projects whether it will be sustainable or not whether it will be vulnerable to the earthquakes or not so all these things that we have to analyze before going for development right and next one it is about land slips in iruki so this article is also very important so here you have to know what is this land slide so land slide is defined as the movement of mass of rock debris or earth down the slope so along this slope so here rocks debris and soil that will be coming down so there are different types of this mass wasting okay so here what is the reason for this mass movements so only one important reason for this mass movements is gravity of earth okay because of this direct influence of gravity so this article is so this point is must important because you will be coming across this mass movements when you are reading your 11th class ncrt so from that point of view so this mass movements are because of direct influence of gravity and in india entire himalayan tract and hills or mountains in sub himalayan terrains of northeastern india western ghats nilagiris in tamil nadu konkan areas so they are prone to landslides and if you see the state wise distribution of this landslides especially in himalayan regions and in western ghats so they are much vulnerable to this landslides for example uttarakhand kerala jammu and kashmir mizoram tripura nagaland arunachal pradesh so they have highest number of landslides and mizoram it is topping the list okay and even in nagaland also they had good number of landslides so this is the map which shows about the landslide affected region so here you have western ghats here you have this himalayan part in the northeastern part clear 
And if you see the government initiative to deal with this landslides, so we have National Landslide Risk Management Strategy. It covers all aspects of landslide disaster risk reduction and management. And we are focusing on even hazard mapping, monitoring and early warning system as well. So even it includes awareness campaigns, capacity building, training, regulation, policies, as well as land site stabilization and as well as mitigation as well. And next one here is we can also focus on National Disaster Management Authority that we have. So it will give us steps that can be taken to reduce this risk of landslides and even it will identify some landslide prone areas in our country and with regular mapping. And we are also having this National Institute of Disaster Management. So it will also focusing on providing of capacity building and will be supporting the various national and state level authorities as well. And next topic it is about tiger killed farmer in Bandipur Tiger Reserve and we have to focus on that Bandipur Tiger Reserve. And I already gave you homework like so let me know what are the causes for increased human animal conflict. So do that job. Okay, so here Bandipur Tiger Reserve which lies in one of the richest biodiversity areas of our country so that is nothing but in our western guards, right? So it is surrounded by Mudumalai Tiger Reserve and Vaynard Wildlife Sanctuary and as well as uh, we will be having Kabini Reservoir. So these are some important things that you have to know and this reserve, and this reserve which is also recognized as mega biodiversity areas in our country okay so if you see the rivers which are flowing in this area so we have Kabini river so we have Kabini river and as well as Moya river which are flowing through this reserve okay and even you have to focus on whether there are any other tiger reserves other than this Bandipur tiger reserve in state of Karnataka or not yes we have other tiger reserves like Badra tiger reserve Nagar Hole Tiger Reserve, Dandeli Anchi Tiger Reserve, Biligrananta Swami Temple Tiger Reserve and Malai Madheshwara Wildlife Sanctuary that had been proposed okay, recently. And next topic it is about Poland. So what is happening in Poland? So actually in Poland ruling ultra conservative law and justice party that led coalition was defeated after it spent a last eight years in office. So finally here PIS party which lost in the elections. So now here ruling ultra conservative law, law and justice party led coalition defeated right and this rule has been to deploy its electoral majority. So now what happened so earlier for the eight years so this PIS party is ruling in the Poland and finally that lost okay so you have to see the map of Poland. So which are the countries sharing boundary with Poland? Here we have Germany, Czech Republic, Slovakia, Ukraine, Belarus and as well as Lithuania and this part is Russia and is having boundary with this Baltic Sea. Okay so that's it. And I want to announce this course. So here in Rathod IS we are going to start the new batch of main science writing practice from November 13th onwards. So this course is absolutely very much beneficial for the beginners who are having the problems regarding answer writing, who are not having the content, so everything. So you can focus on this course and try to join this course. So it is going to start from November 13th and admissions are going on. So you can join this and the cost of this course is 8,200 rupees for one year. So even if you can't pay this amount in one go, you can pay in two installments. And we are also going to come up with this live ethics course that is going to be started from November 15th onwards. And you can get this early bird offer, okay, so that you can get enormous benefits because this ethics which comprises of your GS4, entire GS4, it is only one subject and you can score more than 130 and there is a scope till you can get 160 marks. So if you join this course, I can ensure you that you will be scoring more than 130 plus for sure. So try to join this course and if you have any queries regarding these courses, so you can call me on this number 8074765513. And even this is WhatsApp number also, you can text me in the WhatsApp as well. 
So that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this lecture. So if you really like this class, so hit the like button and share this video to your friends as well. And don't forget to subscribe to the Star Tours IS Academy. Thank you so much for watching.